Sonoff ZB Mini R2, a new device from Sonoff that I just recently bought, a little device that is capable to do a lot, a full walkthrough, unboxing and review. I will add it, this device to the home assistant, we're gonna wire it with the lamp and of course we're gonna test it. And I'm gonna show you the extra features that this device has. Sonoff ZB Mini R2, the device that will replace Shelly Relays, SmartTube welcomes, consider subscribing, let's Let's go. Recently I posted another video about the very similar son of device which was on the Wi-Fi. I think this one is even identical in terms of the dimensions, but it is working over the Zigbee, not the Wi-Fi. And it has nice features related to Zigbee network. So it's a really interesting uh, device. And as you already could notice from the box that it requires no tra wire. So I think then Sonoff also has one which doesn't require a neutral and it is also that small or even smaller. Unfortunately, I don't have it. I could read it, but yeah, I didn't check it, but okay. So why would you need that device? So this is a smart relay that you can put behind the wall switch and control your, your lights. That can also work along with your physical switch. So you could turn on the light with the physical switch, but also with this device remotely with your smartphone over the application. And this is as this is a Zigbee device. You will require a gateway for working and connecting to the uh, that connects to the Wi-Fi. So the gateway you can have one from the Sonoff. You can find the link in the video description. But if you want to use it in the home assistant, as I will plan to do, as I'm planning to do I'm gonna use some son of Zigbee dongle and I will connect through it uh, to the home assistant and I will set up this device in the home assistant so let's go to the, the box so from the box you can see the shape of the of the device the device is not that small it's a bit bigger and I will tell more about dimensions in a second so we can see that it is extreme version ZB mini extreme R2 why it's extreme I think before previous versions were much bigger this is extremely small I think that's why they call it like that so it works with the EWLink uh, application that's a standard application for the son of then we have worked with Google Home but as I said you will need a gateway for that and also with the Alexa from the bottom we have some icons and here the standard stuff that you can control over the voice you can create smart sense smart timer remote control yep here we have the the name the model of the device on this other side also and from the back what we can see yeah as i said before no try wire required it's over the zigbee and it can only handle up to 10 up so i will also show you how you can connect it to the power socket if you know that you will not use some big stuff from it i think it should then it should handle it but that means that around above 2000 watts then um, it can be i think uh, dangerous for for this device so i would not recommend using some big appliances to on this on this device and i don't think that it has a power metering which usually comes with those devices that can can control uh, the power socket so I would rather recommend you to to use some power sockets, smart sockets, which also has the the power meter consumption. So then that's that's that would work well. And the most important thing that the power sockets are outside the wall; they are not hidden behind the wall uh, the, the socket. So there is more air circulation, and they will well, they will they will not hit so much. And uh, you can already see that the dimension of the device is not even four centimeters. And and then a bit more than three centimeters uh, this dimension. So as a as a smart relay, it is very very small. If you compare it to the Shelly devices, for example, Shelly One, the Shelly One is is bigger. So and I think uh, this one is the, looks much better. And I think the shape of it is also uh, a bit uh, a bit better. So that's it. Let's go inside the box. So I'm gonna open it. Come on. 
So of course we have the manual and then the device. I will start from the manual. So in the manual, I think we should have the wiring di diagram. Here you have the wiring diagrams, how to wire it. So from the from the right side, you have S1, S2. So here you put the cables from the physical switch. Then you have life in, life out, and then neutrals that can you can get from the your home and then from home to, to the light. And that's everything. So you have four different uh, connections here, and that will be everything from from the from the manual. But as I said, here is the button that you can put into the pairing mode, and then the, the device will can be added to to your gateway. But what about the device? So device is very small. The first first thing is what I noticed is that the plastic is in like in the premium quality, really nice uh, coloring. So you know that I think then this is gonna be uh, the colors for the Zigbee. But if you look at the Wi-Fi, I have here a Wi-Fi. So this one is in amber. And I think that the box is amber. Here we have gray, but here we have the Wi-Fi and here we have amber. And the box is like green here. I think you see it as blue, but it is more I think green, but okay. But let's get back to our device. So those are the connections that I said already about. From the bottom, you can see the QR code. I think this QR code is just uh, a help when you're gonna add this device in the panic mode. You just scan it and then with the e-link app, and then it will know that it is this device and it will be easily added to your network. And that's that's gonna be it. And what more about this device? So if you have Zigbee devices, you may have some problems with the uh, network performance. So if some device is far from your coordinator, you may not have a good signal. But if you have this device, then what it does is as is as a router, it can extend your network. So the device will, which you have very uh, far away from the coordinator, will connect to this device, and then this device will communicate with the coordinator. So it is an extender of Zigbee network, a really powerful one because it has even a, a normal, let's say, normal way of working as a router, but also a turbo mode, which I think will take a bit more power consumption, will increase a bit of, of the power consumption, but will extend your network very much. So they state that even 200 meters can be extended by this by this product, by, by this device, but I would assume this is in a, let's say, a very friendly environment for the, for the Zigbee network. So it's gonna be in an open environment. And of course, it works over the Zigbee 3.0. It can be a relay or, or a switch. It should easily fit in the European in the European wall behind uh, the walls behind the physical switch, physical light switch. In terms of the how also the device can work, so we have few different way of working. So uh, you can have a momentary switch or adjust just the normal normal uh, physical switch. So yeah, just you push, you uh, there is it is on. Then other way it is off. And also what it means that if you have a smart light and then you're gonna press the physical switch on the wall, you're gonna cut the power to the light bulb so it will be offline it will lose the connection it will just disconnect from your network but if you have this device even with physical switch you can make it the way that it works like it will not cut the power to the uh, your your smart bulb it will just you can just configure it the way that it will just uh, turn off the the light and i know i already said about um uh, um, that this device can be a router, so the company states that it can handle up to 64 sub devices. So I think it's quite quite a lot, and it can also remember uh, a power on state. So if you lose the the power and then you get it back, it will know what was the previous state, and it will you can set it it you can set it this way that it will go to the state that it was before the power out. The next nice thing with this device is that you can update it over the air, so you don't need to you know, connect anything to it to update it, just uh, update over the air, so wirelessly. So now I think I can go and I will show you how to wire it with the, with the light bulb uh, behind the wall switch. I'm now in the garage, so you can see that here we have a light switch with two buttons. So I, I want to just connect the, the right one. However, I want to also show you how to disassemble, disassemble the whole switch. So first you start with the buttons, you, you usually need to just uh, grab them towards you and they should disassemble, comes off, yeah, the first one, then we have the second, yeah, 
Maybe now I will turn off the electricity in this uh, slide switch. So I know which one is it, so now it is off. And the next step is that usually the, the frame is kept by something which is also put inside. So here this, this inside frame is keeping all in one the whole frame. And now with the with the frame inside, you just usually need a screw. So you just need to push it outside. And yeah, be careful not destroy it. Oh, I think that here we have those. No, it's not here. Uh, okay, it's out. Yeah, and the whole frame is off. So here I have the light, light bulb. Yeah, and it doesn't work. Yeah, so it is off. Okay. And let me take it out. So I think it's more complex situation. I just at the beginning I thought that, that it's gonna be very easy. Just you know cables, catch them and put them into the Sonoff, but it isn't. So I have one live cable, which is coming. Um, this one, this one is the live cable. The live. This one is the live cable that comes here, and then from this side the live cable is going down and uh, we are interested in the right side of the light switch so this cable is giving uh, this cable should should not go into the uh, this here to get the, the life but it should go to the s2 uh, connector and uh, the cable from here which we're gonna have the be the life cable gonna go to to sonoff to connector life life in and this one gonna go to this one on the top so you can see that at the bottom of the switch you have uh, L so this is the, the the life should go under so that's why I know that this cable from the top is going to light bulb yeah so that's that's the thing one thing and um, in, the, in terms of the neutral cable so neutral cables you can see that there is here is a connector vago connector i think this is or maybe not but it has it has three neutral cables so what i plan to do is just cut it and place the connector with four inputs so i will also get the neutral to the to the vago this is the way how it is in my case but be careful i think every light switch can can have something different so sometimes the, the colors are wrong especially if you have old building but if new buildings is usually correct but you know it is it is very always a risky uh, what is what so I'm not telling you I'm not electrician so you everything what you do it's on your own risk here I show you my situation and how I do it so yeah I think now is is everything what I wanted to show you and now and what I will do I will connect uh, the son of you can see that here I have already connected the, the Sonoff, which is not the one that I was showing. This is the Mini R4. And the next part of the video, you will see the same as for this, but you can just replicate everything as for the Z ZB Mini R2. And now, please enjoy the next part of the video. So as I said before, here we had the, the cable that was getting the life from here to the bottom for the right uh, right side switch so what i will do i will not taking that to to the life the life from here will go to the to the son of but this one from the bottom will go to the s2 over here now i'm cutting the line which is going to light bulb so this one okay in my case it's this one so what i'm doing i'm well, actually i will not cut it i will put another one from here to, to son of to s1 and this one it's it's a life out so the life out needs needs to go to l out and now i will connect it connect it to switch where is the life and then the life will go as here to L in. Okay, so we have a life cable in. 
L out which goes to the light bulb. Then we have from one side the switch S2. Neutral we take from the, the line that we have at house. So be careful with that neutral. And now I need the, the one which is from the top, from here, or from the right right switch. That was normally going to from here the, the light bulb to light bulb, the life cable from the, to the light bulb, light bulb. But this this one will go to S1. That's it. You can see that it is done here for the Mini R4. But uh, now I will change this to ZB ZB Mini R2. So we're gonna show. I'm, I'm gonna show you how to connect it to to Home Assistant, and we're gonna set up the whole device. That's it gonna be a, a router with a turbo mode, so it will extend my Zigbee network much to to the front where I want to use some, some door sensors for my mailbox, which before I couldn't, so I will also test that whether extending the signal with the ZB Mini R2 is really, really, really helping. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, we have the, now the, the Zigbee version connected of the Sonoff ZB Mini R2. And now what I'm gonna do, I will switch on the, the electricity here and it's gonna go into the pairing mode. Yeah, you can see that we have a green light. So now it is it is in the pairing mode. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move to the screen of my smartphone to add it to the home assistant. Okay, I'm in the home assistant. We go to Zigbee to MQTT. And we now, now need to allow to connect to the Zigbee network. Okay, we now allowing and the device is still in the pairing mode, so I suppose it will be added soon. Yes, so you can see that the device is added, it's interviewing it, and we know that it is son of Zigbee. And okay, so we have it. That was very fast. So go back, you can see at the end, we have nice picture of it, or clear. You can come here, and then what is exposed, we have off on, power on behavior, so it should be off after, yep, turbo mode. Yes, that's I want to have it on. Delayed power on stage. No. Detach relay mode. So I think this is if if you have it on, then what I see that the light switch doesn't work. So you can press it and nothing happens. But it if if this falls, then I can turn off the light and turn on. Oh I'm afraid that I can put it to the pairing mode. No, okay, it's fine. Okay, so that's that. External trigger mode. I was saying in the video we have edge, pause, following off, following on. Yeah, inching setup. So I think this one then is it's nice setup to have it for the garage or get the front gate, the entrance gate, just to open it because that needs just a signal and it start opening signal to stop, signal to close. So I'm now using Shelly Shelly one for that. And you can uh, select uh, the inching time. Okay, okay, so that's it. So I think it works nicely. So I'm now gonna move to the camera of my smartphone. Okay, so we are back here. So you can see that you can press the button on the device and you will gonna turn off the, the light bulb, turn on, and then we have a switch here. So you can turn it on, off. Then what will happen if I will turn it on here? And then if I will switch that, it's off. So as you can see, it works perfectly so you can use the smartphone to turn it off and off and also the switch so it doesn't matter that you have it now off and you turn on the light bulb and now uh, it turn off yeah it works nicely so this is a, a nice feature that it does the device has now what i will do as i don't want to have to hear the mini r4 that i uh, shown you before i want to have this one the the zigbee device that be mini 2 so i will just now try to push everything inside and then close everything and let's see that everything will fit into the hole okay we are done and as you can see i couldn't fit everything i think there was just too much cable inside and what i would need to do is just cut them and you know that would give me a more space there but it's already dark so i don't have time for that now today so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna leave it like that and later i can easily fix it but uh, yeah remember that's not gonna be very easy to put that inside 
you know the same thing is with the with the shari so it's not like with son of steel whether it's small you know there is not enough space if you just put a lot of cables over there inside so i recommend you to you know to leave the cables like enough only not more than enough because then you can may not fit unless you have a big space uh, there uh, like uh, deep deep sockets deep holes there or you have a kind of a um, a hole a socket beneath the physical switch because there are also like like this one that there is a socket with there's a hole for the socket but then there is like a, a hole underneath the, the main main hole so that would be everything in terms of the installing the the sonoff behind the, the light switch and now we can summarize the device sonoff zb mini r2 should you buy it or not if you want to make your light switch smart i think this is the best option if you don't want to use shelly which is more expensive and bigger and also on wi-fi or, or ble and probably sonoff is the only one that small which is on the over the zigbee as you may already heard from me the i don't like shelly because most of those devices devices just broke in my house so this is the only alternative that small that can fit behind the wall switch the light switch and i think in a very good price it looks good the material looks premium and that zb mini r2 is over the zigbee so if you are the person like me that rather try to avoid wi-fi devices i think this is the only device now on the market that would fit your needs it can work as a, as a router, so it's a very good option if you want to extend your Zigbee network and can be also used behind the electric sockets. But remember that it is up to 10 amps. As you could see in the video, you can use the physical switch or the smartphone and all works great. You have also the, the detached mode when the physical switch just doesn't work and you can control the light with the smartphone. Adding the device to the Home Assistant was very simple and all the configuration can be set up in Home Assistant. In the video description you can find links to, to this product. If you are looking for a Wi-Fi version, please check my other video when I'm reviewing and testing the Mini R4. And that would be everything here, so thank you for watching, consider subscribing, bye!